my job it's really to make sure that the director is happy that their vision is brought to life i'm here not to do the crazy sound design in the world i'm here to support that project emotionally so that's my goal my goal is to support the project with the sound that we're doing i'm dana rushi and this is my studio i'm the owner of loyal sound we take care of the whole sound department for film and TV, from recording on set to doing sound design, fully mixing. People call us because we're a one-stop shop for sound. Thankfully, in my career, I've worked on some projects that have had some recognition and a lot of exposure. We won two regional Emmys last year for a documentary that we did local in South Florida. I think the main thing with Atmos is the fact that they're making it user-friendly. What I think other formats failed, uh, in, it's basically that translation into the user. So formats like Ambisonics or Surround, you needed to have the fancy setup, the speakers. With Atmos, you can listen to it on headphones. So that's a big difference. And I think it's the future. And there's still, you know, many things to, to develop. Like, we'll see how it goes. I have been working in Surround for a decade. And previously, it was hard to go from stereo to Surround. The thing right now with Aurea is that it makes my life really easy because everything's integrated into one system. So I have sound ID integrated into my system. It goes into the speakers. I don't have to be worrying about bypassing the plugin, making sure that it's active, that it's not active. It's working there the whole time. It's really easy to go from stereo to surround. The monitor control works in Atmos, surround, stereo. It just makes my life really easy overall. Yeah, everything's integrated in one system and it's just very well designed. When you're working on feature films or you're working on documentaries, the audio approach is a little bit different. For feature films, you do want everything to sound super present and almost exaggerated. We don't really hear punches the way we hear them on film, but if they don't sound like that, then it would feel weird because now everything is just super over the top for film. Everything needs to sound great, present, and you just have you know many, many tracks. With documentary, things are a little bit different because documentaries are a lot more organic. It's more about the ambience. It's more about making sure that the, f the person feels like they're there. It's more about making sure that the viewer feels like they're there in that place. So we're working a lot with ambiences. We want to make sure that when you're looking at that film, you feel like you're in that location. The thing for me and where I used to struggle before going into Aurea is that a lot of these interfaces seem like they're made for music, designed for music. And when you go into post-production, it's not the same approach. So you're losing a lot of features. The thing with Aurea is that it, it's pretty dynamic. In my experience, it just works great if you're doing stereo, if you're doing surround, if you're doing Atmos. It's a, an interface that was very well thought and it's just really up to you how you customize it and use it for your needs. Right now, we're going to be looking at The Purpose, which is a short documentary that I just finished mixing. We're just starting festival circuit with it. So it's going to be going into festivals in the States and all over the world. And I'm going to be showing you some of the things that I did for it to be mixed in surrounded stereo. So right now you can see right here that I have my video in my edit window track. Normally I would have this video in another track and then I have my edit window and my mix window and my video is in my mix window and I can kind of reference that. Right here, I have my dialogue tracks. And since this was mostly sit down interviews, I just have the laugh track, which is the one that I chose to go with. So if I solo that. My name is Robert Garcia. I knew I always wanted to be an artist. I knew I wanted to make. You can see in the surround track that this is taking mostly the center channel, which is my center speaker. I want my dialogue to be clean on that center speaker. But I'm also sending a little bit of this to this aux. So the dialogue is going to the aux and then the aux is going to the reverb. So this reverb right here, it's basically the dialogue in a room. I'm mimicking a room right here. You can see it. And I have that room in the front and the back speakers. So my center speaker is my dry dialogue. And then my front and my rear is the dialogue in that room 
what we call wet or processed. That way it doesn't sound as dry. It sounds like it's the voice in the room. My name is Robert Garcia. I knew I always wanted to be an artist. I knew I wanted to make music. If I mute this reverb. My name is Robert Garcia. I knew I always wanted to be an artist. I knew I wanted to make music. It doesn't have the same depth that it has with the reverb. If you're listening to these on a big theater, you know, normally when we work in, in documentaries and films, a lot of times they'll end up not only on streaming, but also on theaters. If you're listening to this on a proper theater, you'll, you'll be able to listen to all those details. So it's important to uh, trust your room. My room, when I go to festivals and I listen to those mixes, they translate pretty well. That's because I'm using Sound ID, so I know that I can trust my room, which to me is really important. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the music and uh, the rest of the sounds. I was just always seeking for that love and acceptance, and that led me down the wrong path. I was facing 25 to life. Now I wanna tell the world my story and what God has done in my life. And this phrase right here, to make it a little bit more uh, dramatic, because he's saying a line that's that's a pretty big statement. So I basically copied that audio and only for the last part of the dialogue, I placed a delay so that it's transitioning better into the next phrase. I was facing 25 to life. Now I want to tell the world my story and what God has done in my life. But it's very subtle. I don't want to take people away from the mix. It's just a small detail that's helping transition that line and emphasize it better into the next one. I was facing 25 to life. Now I want to tell the world my story and what God has done in my life. And then right here, we go to a drone shot and we start listening to the ambience. So I'm playing with a little bit of ambience. I'm soloing right here, the police siren. Little bit of ambience. Skateboard. Trying to help support visually what I'm looking at. As this police siren progresses into the next shot and transitions, you can hear that very subtly it pitches down so that it's dying down in a natural way. And I did that by processing this with a stock plugin, uh, which is Verify right here on Audio Suite. If you go on Pitch Shift, Verify, you can slow things down or speed them up. This is a plugin that comes with Pro Tools, and I just think it's very user-friendly and it, it just does the job really well so let's listen to this a little bit everything together and acceptance and that led me down the wrong path i was facing 25 to life now i want to tell the world my story and what god has done in my life They say the first two years of your life, a child soaks everything up as a sponge. As you can see in this section, we have dialogue, we have music, and we have some ambience. My approach to mixing is basically because my dialogue is the most important thing always. The first thing I mix is my dialogue and my music tracks. And if I go right here on my music, you see that I have very subtle volume changes. So I might be cutting the music a little bit in volume, bringing it down to make some space for the dialogue. To me, I mix music and dialogue first, and then I start adding the sound effects one by one. If I'm sound designing the project, by the time I'm done with my dialogue and my music mixing, then it's just a matter of bringing the sound design and start tweaking as I go. So that for example, the ambience, I'll start messing with the volume with clip gain, and I'm already processing, I'm, I'm basically tweaking the volume of my clip itself. So by the time I'm done with that, it's gonna be 90% there. 
So right here, we're looking at a recreation of a scene that we don't really have B-roll. So we see a little bit of the car. Um, we see it being out of focus. So it's slow motion. It's just recreating a scene that was dramatic. Um, let's see some of the sound effects that I put. Right there, we have a little bit of breathing. It's just helping to create some tension. A little bit of delay. You can hear some cars, um, but it's almost like psychedelic. I'm messing with the pitch to make it sound like that. Low end transition into the next scene. Right here, we have some gunshots. We have um, like five tracks of gunshots. And then some low end right here to emphasize. Emphasize that last gunshot. So this low end right here, I'm sending into the LFE. When you're hearing that on a theater, it's gonna sound, uh, you're gonna feel that hit. So let's listen to this whole thing. By that time, you kind of just sucked into it and you're scared to leave. They ended up setting me up in a car chase. I ended up shooting at the car. The driver got hit like three times. The car crashed. And then like 22 hours later, the gang task force was kicked down my door and I got arrested. I was ready two credits away from graduating. right there this is burning so i have a few sound effects to help me with that effect that visual effect and it also helps me transition good into the next scene so as you can see even though i have my sound design my sound effects i never really struggle with the voice i mix everything around the voice. So the voice is my most important thing. Then everything I bring, I start tweaking. And sometimes you might have the right sound effect, but it's just too loud. So it will take you out of the mix and you're like, oh, this is not working. A lot of times it's just a matter of volume. So if you take the time to play with the volume, you know, very small changes. You see right here, I have clip gain. I like to use clip gain because it will take me 90% to where I want that sound effect. And then I can always tweak, or if I wanted to do um, volume automation, I can. But in audio, especially in post-production, sometimes 2 dBs will make all the difference in the world. So it's a matter of bringing the sound effects, tweaking the volume, playing it, making sure that it sounds good. Then if I wanted to change this, I would just go up or down. And I'm constantly listening to the same thing over and over because I'm tweaking, doing small tweaks. But sometimes, you know, those really small tweaks will get you there. From that scene, we go into this, which is very test. It's just him in the car. Lately, life has been feeling like one big classroom. And it's just like lesson after lesson of things that I don't know. So my dialogue is in the center. I also have a little bit of the room tone of the car so that it feels natural. Uh, you know, the engine driving interior, I see that, um, I hear it. It's very clean. This was very well recorded, thankfully. I came back, they uh, disapproved me. I guess I was doing it for like two, three months, excited. Music but comes I had a in. Chance, you know, felt like a, a citizen of society. And then I guess randomly, they had us do like a, a yearly background check again. And I did the yearly background check. And when the background check came back, they uh, disapproved me. Take your knee up off my neck and let me breathe. I can't find employment because of my felony. This 2020, this happened back in 05. I did that crime, I paid my time. Let me move on with my life. Let me breathe, let me breathe. Take your knee up off my neck. That was kind of like very deflating because it was like, man, like something that. 
right there I have a big hit. This is uh it's a part of the documentary that's emotional. He's singing, you know, something that that happened to him. You can see that I have a few sound effects if I solo this. Now that low went for the final hit. I have it on the LFE. So when you hear that on a theater, it's just you're just gonna hear that low end. Uh, it's almost like a little hit to the chest. And also because this has like a slow decay, it helps me transition better into the next scene. So it's a natural way of transitioning. That was kind of like very deflating because it was like, man, like something that happened 17. We go back to the car and uh, same dialogue and a little bit of the natural engine of the car. I've ever been denied for something and then approved for it again. You're always going to come against resistance. Sometimes you just got to fight through it. Then my ambience kicks in. I don't know, man. It's kind of... Sending my ambience to the front and the back, as you can see right here on my sound effects bus. If I didn't have this, dot, this ambience, I'm going to mute it for a second. I'm just going to have his dialogue. It just feels empty. I don't know, man. It's kind of... It's trippy. I do have a little bit of the ambience when he starts talking, but otherwise, we just feel a little bit of, like, depth, and it just feels empty. So this ambience, you know, you can see that it's a little bit windy. It's helping me support visually, and it at the same time, it's never taken me away from the story or from him being there. So it's just supporting the project overall. Here, a little bit of the wind. I don't know, leaves man. moving. Kinda... That's what we're doing. My goal and my job is not to add sound design to add sound design because anybody can grab and put, you know, 300 tracks, but that's not really the goal. The goal is to support the project. So that can be two tracks. In this case, I have two different ambiences, plus the ambience that I have from him in the center, the ambience that I added, it's in the front and the back. So now I'm surrounded by audio, which when you're going to a theater, that's what you want. You want the people to feel like, you want the viewers to feel like they're in that place. Because even if I fail, ground zero for me is still freedom. Ground zero for me is I'm still free. I'm not in that place. Those cars, I'm adding a little bit of them so that it doesn't sound empty. Because I see the car kind of like walking into the parking lot. And then that car in the back is just very subtle. Um, I want people to, you know, never be taken away from the story and be like, oh, he added this sound or he added this punch or he added this explosion. No, um, I want people to, when they see the project, to feel like that was the original sound from the project. That's my goal for it to feel natural and organic, especially for documentary. Zero for me is still freedom. Ground zero for me is I'm still free. I'm not in that place. But I feel like once you have physical freedom, spiritual freedom. Very subtle. I feel like you, you do have everything. Being locked up, the fights. I can handle all that, but I think the hardest thing that was almost unbearable was being away from family. And so, like, you know, hugging them for the first time, uh, that was, like, the true actual sign of, like, physical freedom that I was free. One of the most powerful tools in sound design is silence. Sometimes you might have a scene that's emotional and all you need is silence. In this case, he finished talking and we have a few seconds of the ambience. And sometimes that silence will make you feel like it's uh, it's awkward or that something's about to happen. But sometimes silence is necessary to illustrate uh, pain and some feelings that might not be positive. One thing that I really enjoy from the audience software, and I'm going to bring it to the screen for a second, 
you can see what's happening with the speakers. I knew that he was changing, that he was in there for a purpose. And when he came home, I knew that he was going to be bigger and better than he was before he went in. You can see the volumes that are playing on your left, right, center, left rear, right rear. I can also see on my setup in each speaker what my calibration is looking like. I have something that honestly is one of my favorite things, my trim for each individual speaker. I don't think this has ever been done by another software like this. The fact you don't have to go into the back of the speaker and be tweaking is just super easy to do. You can even be calibrating the speaker yourself. You have your SPL meter right here, and then you're messing with the trim of the speakers. You can do it with one click. You can solo groups, height, sides, fronts. You can solo, you can mute. You have basically power over each individual speaker, which is really powerful. You have your mutes, your dims. You can change the face. It's just, to me, it's reverse engineer. It's one of those things where like they saw the things that we were missing and that we very much needed, and they added it to the software. And the best thing about it is that they're putting constantly um, updates. So the software is always updated, improving things and uh, making it better as we go.